This is an overview of simple concepts on Mirage Movement gathered over its first two weeks. This game's parkour is basic, don't expect the flow or freedom of classic Assassin's Creed. Still, knowing what you can do helps enjoy it more. Possum's movement gains its strength from his surroundings. He's in a dense city, so the simple movement from the last three games actually gets to do some work here even though little has changed mechanically. The first decision you have to make is whether to use default controls or rebind your sprint to a button you're comfortable holding. There's no right answer, but I'll give you my reasons for why you may wish to use hold to sprint. It's simple. Mirage lacks meaningful feedback to remind you of whether you're still in sprint state or whether you've been kicked out of it for any number of reasons. It's true that generally the game does its best to keep you in it, but some players don't want to gamble with that and I'm one of them. My peace of mind and confidence is worth holding a button down. So I bind sprint to a hold action, which makes it clear whether I'm sprinting or not. Keyboard and mouse players will find this simple to do, since the default binding of shift is comfier to hold than the default controller binding of L3. Controllers can do just fine by binding their sprint to holding right trigger or holding R2 and putting tool wheel on something else. This is what I do. It also helps because being able to exit sprint on purpose is important too. Holding your climb button as you move forward through objects will let you auto parkour through them, or if you path into a wall begin climbing it. If you're not climbing over something or not jumping a big gap though, you can usually just path into it with your movement keys or left stick, no climb button needed. Good on stuff like ship masts, uh, the tops of sails, or connector lines between buildings. Stair-like objects like these are parkour starters, they help you move upward to higher ground quickly. They're both on street level and some roofs. Look for these and use them often, they usually have white sheets on them, but not always. If you see other kinds of objects with white sheets on them like these wider obstacles, especially on roofs, those let you do special vaults using a parkour up action through them, which requires no speed or momentum unlike normal vaults. If you're on a wall and there's another wall or platform very close behind you, tap and climb will back eject toward it. You have to be pretty close for this. If you're on a wall and there's a haystack behind and below you, tap and climb will backflip and leap of faith into it. You can side and back eject in any direction off a smooth wall with no handholds, as long as you have something to actually land on. Trees also count. Anything you can wall run on that has nothing to grab with your hands, you can freely eject from it, especially if there's a valid target object nearby. You can actually use this to gain height and make otherwise impossible climbs sometimes, but it's very contextual. Slopes like these also let you jump in any direction, although it's a lot easier to do it while sliding down one in my experience. Maybe it's easier on a keyboard than an analog stick, but manual jumping or running up one of these isn't something I can do reliably. Maybe you can. Side dismounts are your most common non-basic movement in Mirage. They're more reliable than ejects and you can do them anytime as long as there's a valid platform lower than you to your left or right. Be above something on a wall, move toward the object or platform you want to dismount to, and mash parkour down. A dismount can end in a landing with your feet, or a hang with your hands. So do them a bunch and you should get a feel for them. It's worth practicing this movement over any other, since this is the action Baghdad makes most available most of the time. When you're on a wall, Holding parkour down will release and detach from it, free falling as far down as you wish. Bossum will not automatically grab handholds on the way down unless you hold the button. If you see this kind of stuttery sequence of movements, you're constantly re-grabbing the wall because you're holding drop the entire time. During a wall release, you can of course catch ledge by holding parkour down or parkour up to re-grab the wall at any viable handhold as you fall past it. You can catch ledges in this game anytime you're in midair actually, by pointing toward the wall with left stick or movement keys and either holding parkour up or down as accepted inputs. If you're holding an up input, you'll stay where you grabbed. If you're holding a down input, you'll release again right after. Good for grabbing something close to street level when you want to get down. You can vault over short objects by running at them and holding parkour down as you reach them. This doesn't usually work from a standstill, you need some momentum to do it. Short fall off edges with another platform vertically close by, by running at them and holding parkour down as you reach them. You usually have to be a normal run state, but you can actually slide at edges as long as you keep holding parkour down the whole time to still get the short fall when you reach the edge. You can practice this over and over at the Harbiya Bureau, which is the first one the game has you reach in Baghdad. If a drop is too tall to step off, Basim will pivot and start descending. You can shortfall the descent through chunky stair-like architecture in many places throughout the city, so keep an eye out. If you're sprinting and tap dodge, you'll roll. If you're sprinting and tap crouch or drop, you'll slide. You can plug these movements in between obstacles or use them to cancel the end frames of a hard landing, for example. When you get the breakfall skill, you don't have to do this roll. You can do this one instead. Mash, jump, or parkour up as you're about to hit the ground. To do this, you have to be landing from pretty high up, like in this clip. Focus lets you glitch, hack, or otherwise fast forward your position in the anima simulation. It's better used for movement than actual takedowns, which is why it's in this video, especially when you only have two bars of it. Use it to get down safely. 
Use it to tactically skip a climbing section or quickly reach a marksman. Use it to extend your jump range. Use it to finish 1-2s that you would normally be out of position for. Use it to quickly reach a guard who's about to detect you. Sleep or trap knock down a guard you want to use as a focus node for an escape route. To keep track of where he is, you can mark him with Enkidu or just memorize his location. Once you're done with an area, run back toward that guard that you slept and focus out of the zone, since sleeping or stunned enemies can still be focused just fine. This is what we know works so far two weeks in. If you felt like something is missing, it's because I did my best to only include things that are relatively consistent so far, or whose activation conditions we actually know confidently, though I am pushing it with one or two of these. If we find out new information on how to reliably do certain things in Mirage, I'll release small update videos going over them too. In the meantime, thanks for hanging out, listening, watching. May fog shroud you, may stars light your way, and may the night keep you safe.